sing with my mouth, with my mouth. I declare, I declare it's his greatness with all my heart. With all my heart, I declare to praise the Lord. Let's say, worship center, this was his plan. This was his plan. This was his purpose for me to be created and made for praise. Oh, my God. 
this morning. Oh, come on, 10 more seconds. 10 more seconds. Oh, I feel a breakthrough in this house. I feel a breakthrough in this house. Come on, church. Come on, church. If we were down at the shoe, they wouldn't be able to sit you down. We are in the house of God this morning. Give God a praise in the house. Don't get tired on God now. Give God a praise in the house. Come on and lift your voices. Lift your voices in the house. Oh, glorify you, God. We glorify you. We magnify you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Oh, he's here. He's here. He's here. He's here this morning. Oh, God is in this house this morning. He's in this house this morning. Oh, God, we welcome you. We adore you, God. We magnify you this morning, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel it in my spirit this morning, hallelujah. And I know I'm not by myself. I know I'm not by myself. I've heard too many stories. I've heard too many complaints. So many of us have been waiting on God. And this is our moment. This is our due season. Hallelujah. 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 Welcome to the worship center. <laughs> to the worship center of Central Ohio, where we believe in miracles, signs, and wonders. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need a miracle this morning, just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is coming by to visit us this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are celebrating this morning not only our life, but the life of D Apostle David Salvatore Carter. Give God a hand clap of praise for this. our pastor, our apostle. 60 years this side of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You may be seated, hallelujah. Welcome again to the worship center of Central Ohio. We are so happy to have so many guests and family members. We are so happy to see all of you this morning. We say hello to those watching online. Welcome to the worship center. I just love saying that. The worship center because that's what we do, hallelujah. That's who we are. And this year, we have our theme. What's our theme this morning? Okay, so I need more than three people to tell us what our theme is this year. What's our theme? Year of Acceleration. <laughs> year of Acceleration. Hallelujah. And it comes from the book of Amos. And we thank God for his word. We just, when we remind God and we tell God what his word says, God responds to his word. Amen. So if you are in need of a healing, find a scripture on healing. If you are need, in need of prosperity, find a scripture on that. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him, good morning and it's good to see you today. Good morning. It is good to see you today. So we are doing things a little different today because we're, we're celebrating Apostle this morning, amen? And so we do have, um, we have our song and special events. We're gonna allow uh, the elders to step in and take over. But before we do that, can we just go to God in prayer this morning? Before we do that, before we hand over the mic to the elders, Amen. If you don't mind standing, if you will. And let's go to God in prayer. God, our Father, how majestic is your name. 
God, when we think about who you are and all that you have made, all that you have done, God, all we can do is just stand in adoration. God, we stand in reverence to who you are. God, there is no God like you. There is no one in all the earth like you. We thank you, God, for out of the millions and billions of people that you looked down and you handpicked each and every one of us to be in your family. God, we thank you for choosing us. We thank you for entrusting in us the precious gift of your son, Jesus Christ. God, we know we came out to celebrate Apostle Carter, but without Jesus, there would be no celebration. God, we lift you up and we elevate you on today, God. We have no other gods before us except you, God. We know how you have chosen the children of Israel to be your, your nation. But God, when you sent Jesus Christ to come and, and he did his work on the cross, you adopted us into the family. So every blessing that you gave to Abraham, God, we stand here today reminding you, God, of all the blessings that you said would be ours. If only we believed it by faith. So today, God, we come to you by faith this morning, claiming back what is already ours. We claim back health, God. We claim back, God, prosperity. We come against the spirit of poverty today, God. We come against the spirit of lack today, God. We come against the disease of cancer, God. Oh, God, you are a miracle worker. You are the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. Oh, God, what Jesus did was just an example of what we can do. So today, God, we stand in that power, and we look at anything that is, in, that is happening and hindering us in our walk with you today. And we stand with power and authority coming up against anything that is not like you, God. Because you've given us that right. You've given us that authority, God. And we pray right now for Apostle Carter, God. We pray that his latter days will be greater than his former days, God. We pray that you will pour out a blessing from heaven on today, God, and overflow in his life, overflow in his bank accounts, God. Oh, magnify him in this house. Oh, we thank you, God, for what's going to happen on this morning. Anyone watching online, anyone in this building today that don't, they don't know your son, we pray that if it's a song that will be sung, a prayer that will be prayed, or a word that will be preached today, God, don't let them leave the same way in which they came. God, we thank you for this house. We thank you for what you're going to do, the work through us, God. We magnify you today, God. We glorify you today, God. Give God a praise in this house. We ask all of these and other blessings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Come on and magnify God today. Come on and magnify God today. Give God a praise in the house. Come on and give God a praise.
Hallelujah, worship center. Hallelujah. We are so happy to be uh, uh, celebrating our, our apostle and just so thankful for his wonderful sister and her husband, for Apostle Horde, for all the guests and visitors that's joined with us today, all the love that we're sharing with each and every one of you, and you as well. So we thank you. We want to come make sure we honor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we're going to uh, start with communion. Does everyone have their elements? Okay, let us pray. I'm sorry. Give us a few more minutes to get settled. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, as we prepare to partake of these elements, we do so in remembrance of your son, Jesus Christ how he shed his blood for us, how he loves us, how you love us, and you pass that love on to us and through us to everyone gathered here today. Lord, we thank you for the safe travels. We thank you for just having the heart and mind to be here and honor you and honor our pastor. Lord, we thank you for what we're about to receive. We honor and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. On the same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, said, this is my body. Let us all eat together. He also took the cup, blessed it, and said, this is my blood. Let us all drink together. For as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of God. So let's praise God for shedding his blood and giving us the gift of eternal life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Worship Center, right now, we're going to continue to honor our apostle. So if we would have the, the young ones from the church, please come up and share in this time. children. Okay. Okay. This is uh, 
kids in Christ's kingdom. And so they want to say happy birthday to Pastor and present their their accolades that they made especially for you and they in their own words. And you know, kids say the darndest things. So we want you to we want you to take this basket of accolades from your children in honor of your birthday. And they want to say it all together. What do you want to say? Thank you. As you can't leave. <laughs> okay. All right. As we continue on, as we continue on, we um, we know we can't even begin to thank our apostle for all the things that he do for us, the time that he spends um, praying for us, <laughs> the time that he spends being available. And we know that's, that's very important. I know he's told me, and I know I'm one of the nice ones here. So he's told me that I, I can call on him in, in any time of trouble. And I'm sure he feels the same about all of you. Because this man has a heart for God, and because of that, he has a heart for each and every one of us. So at this point in time, as a church, we want to make sure that we take an additional moment to honor him and just let him know how much we love him. So let's, let's give our apostle a big round of applause. Please. Come on, is that, a, is that applause of love? That's, that's love on our apostle right now. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Well, when you walked away, I said, well, come, can we have your gift? You were leaving it, so we were going to take your gift. But I would like to also say, um, along with Elder Hunt, that um, as we stand alongside of Apostle, we cannot ask for a better uh, pastor and a leader. And I'm so glad that you answered the call, not knowing what you was going to <laughs> endure here in Columbus. <laughs> You might have would have changed your mind, <laughs> but now I know that you, on the other side of it, that you said you would not have taken anything for this journey. And so we just want to thank you for continue uh, that steadfastness. No matter what has happened and you're going through, as we continue to pray for you and walk alongside of you, we just thank God for you. Amen. We can't thank... We can't say that you have uh, shied of the word because of what you've gone through. That has never diminished. And that is the character of God in you. And so we just want to thank you. We love you from the bottom of our heart. We cannot pay you for that word. God will continue to pay you for what you, what you continue to do for us. So, but this is a token of our love. And the anniversary is going to be even better. Give you something to look forward to. Yeah. 
good morning everyone i'm <laughs> thank you so much and uh, i just want to say one thing that me and my family we are truly blessed that we have our our pastor with us and he's a great man of god and uh, thank you so much for your love and god bless you with long and blessed and peaceful life so thank you pastor god bless you and happy birthday <laughs> At this time, um, we're going to do our, our announcements. So, no, okay, all right. So at this time, we'll have our apostle come forward. Praise the Lord! Come on, let's. Come on, let's stand on our feet and give Lord a hand clap of praise. Everybody, everybody in the building, let's bless, begin, come on, begin to bless the Lord and to magnify the Lord. Clap your hands, all oh you people. Shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord is good. His mercy everlasting, his truth endures to all generations. I'm so grateful, you may be seated. I'm so grateful for all of you that are here and those that are watching online. Um, for your kindness uh, over this weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful and humbled um, by the um, expressions of love and um, cards and text messages and Facebook posts, etc. And I'm just so grateful for all of the love that's been shown to me and then by your presence. I appreciate that so much. And, um, and, and you know, I love all of you. I love everybody. Amen. I love. Y'all supposed to say, I love you too. Amen. I, I love. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, I say, I love you. supposed to say, I love you. But I love you too. But, but I do. And I'm, I'm grateful uh, today. Um, my sister is here, Dr. Gina Carter. Uh, doctor, um, medical profession, and, um, and I don't say my brother in law, I say my brother. Um, Brother Jim Edwards is here yeah. with her. And, you know, um, she's my favorite sister. And, uh, and <laughs> my favorite sister. And yeah, it takes a special kind of person to be with your favorite sister. And, and, and um, Jim is just a, Jim is a gem, and I appreciate you. And my frat brother from Brown University, my, um, Mike Evans, is he just wave your hand, Mike, so people can, you know, 18 years old, I knew him back then, so he knows more about me than a whole lot of y'all know, and, and I thank the Lord for him that we are still, we are in the body of Christ, amen. And my brother Bruce, y'all know Bruce, Bruce, you know, Pastor Bruce. And just so you know, you know, where I kind of come from, and, uh, the preacher for today is um, uh, to say preacher is uh, he's a preacher and then some. It doesn't begin to really um, outline in detail who he really is. Um, Bishop Ed, Ed Stevens is a man after <clears throat> after uh, God's own heart. You know, I, I think that when God creates people, I, I, we know that God places things and he, he puts things in them. Anointings and giftings and talents. Um, what he's placed in this man and, and I'm so honored to be his friend and I appreciate that you know as, as close as we are I respect the God in him no matter how close you get to somebody you better appreciate the God yeah, I don't think y'all talking to me 
the God, what God has placed in them, and respect the anointing and the gifting. And um, some of you know him, some of you don't. But after he preaches, you're going to know who, um, who he really is. And so somebody's going to sing, choir's going to sing, and our, our friend Apostle Ronald Horde is here. This, Everybody stand for just a moment. You sit there. Apostle Horde. We speak healing to your body right now. Stretch your hands toward this man, oh God. We, we speak healing. We come, Lord, for one reason alone, to celebrate you. And we believe in your, you were wounded for our transgressions. Bruce, for our iniquity, chastisement, our peace was upon you, and by his stripes you were healed. And you are healed, and so, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we know what doctors can do. And doctors couldn't do anything unless you do it first. And so, God, right now, we believe in miracles, signs, and wonders in his body, in his spirit, in his mind, right now, in the name of Jesus, we we receive your healing for his body right now in the name of Jesus. Heal his wife right now in the name of Jesus. We glorify you. And, and, and let, let it be a testimony. Let it be a testimony of your goodness and of your glory. And our oh, grace and favor be upon his life in abundance in the name of Jesus. And all the people of God shouted hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah! Come on, give God a praise in the house. Hallelujah! Come on, come on! We we didn't we we it's my birthday, but it's the it's, it's the Lord's day. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, Hallelujah! So they're gonna come and in music ministry, and then Bishop Ed's gonna do what he does. So come on, let's let's do it. Amen. Let's receive our kids as they come this morning. We've taken time to kind of teach them about what it means to praise. And even Reverend Jim was asking them what they thought praise means. The kids gave some great answers on yesterday. Some of them said that it means to glorify, some said it means to give thanks. So even our kids are learning what it is to praise and magnify God, even at their young age. Bless the Lord. And they're going to sing and testify in their own way. Give a song of praise.
Let's bless the Lord for our special guest this morning who's going to share with us a good friend to the ministry, and we love him dearly here at the Worship Center, Apostle Ronald Horde. Come on, Worship Center, show him your love today. being a pastor and an apostle, the word of God is most important. But I, I just have to tell my family this testimony. Um, I've been in and out of the hospital for over a year, over a year. In the nursing home, I had a seven-hour back surgery, spine surgery, and had an infection that went all through my body. And then they told me, said, you need to prepare yourself for tonight. Well, let, let me let me tell you first of all, I on the I, I died on the way to the hospital, and I woke up in the ambulance. They brought me back after surgery. Glory, glory. My sister was there, and she said that I wasn't responding, so I died after the surgery. So I had two near deaths or deaths, and the Lord brought me back, and. And the rehab, they told me, said, you will prepare yourself to not to walk again. My God. Said the devil is a liar. I went from, I went from being white to the wheelchair being treated like a baby to the wheelchair from the to the from the bed to the wheelchair to the walker now I'm using the rollator but I'm able to walk 10 to 20 feet without it All right, sir. I'm getting ready to get back to where I was can you look at some and tell them God is a healer Tell somebody that God is a healer. Yeah, Lord, God is. Oh, Lord, I'm God. Oh, yeah. All right. So, happy birthday, Pastor. So, when I was asked to come, I wanted to say no because I know that y'all know I like jumping. I like climbing the chairs. I've done everything but do a flip in here. And to sit in here and not to do luck, I was just so sad this morning because I wasn't able to do. Take your time, sir. Take your time. Take your time. But I thank God. Can somebody thank God with me? So I just want to tell y'all, whatever you're going through, just hold on a little longer. Just hold on just a little longer. I don't know all the words, but I just want to sing just a little bit of, and then sing a, a half of another out of the way. One, two, three. Here we go. If y'all don't mind, put your hands together with me on this one. Huh. 
yesterday, a man stepped to me, said, how can you smile when your world is upside down? I told him, in my secret, when I want to cry, I take a look around, and I see that I'm getting back, and I hold on. Change is coming. Change is coming. Oh, no. Everything, every bout of thing. Hold on. Hold on. You can make it. You can make it. Hold on. Hold on. Don't worry. Don't worry. Let me play a little bit. said he one time he said I I was complaining about not having shoes to wear until I went down the street and saw a young man that had no feet so I was complaining about my surgery and what I went through my God and to see where God has brought me from hallelujah Hallelujah. And that's why I love Jesus so. 
Anybody love him today? And there's something particular about his name. Ah.
Dark clouds may rise. Storm wind may blow. But I That I've found the Savior. Anybody found the Savior? I found the Savior. I found the Savior. And He, and He, sweet. Oh, hallelujah, thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, I love the name Jesus. It is so sweet. It is the sweetest sweet name. Father, we're grateful and thankful for your grace. And without a doubt, your name is the sweetest name we know. We bless you and we magnify you. We stand in a posture now of expectation and we thank God for your grace. In the name of Jesus, God, whatever platform that people are watching at this present moment from the physical campus Facebook, YouTube, we bless you right now. And we know because of the power of your word that none of us will remain the same. We declare now a release in the house. Whatever has us bound is now loose in the name of Jesus. I dare not attempt to preach today without your power. We bless you and we magnify you now. And we bless you and thank you in advance for what you're doing and what you're about to do. 
And every believer said together, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you put those hands together and thank God for Jesus? Amen. Let's thank God for the angel of this house one more time. Apostle David Carter. Yeah. Hallelujah. We bless God for him. All the pastors, Brother Bruce, my brother, and uh, this anointed man over here. God bless you, Apostle. We thank God for your gifts that God has, has given you to uh, bless us through music. And we join in with complete restoration and healing. Uh, for your body, sir. Hallelujah. We know he knows. God knows how to do it, doesn't he? Amen. Bless his holy name. It is an honor and a joy and a privilege for me to be back here to share with the wonderful church. Amen. Amen. This wonderful ministry that God has blessed, the Worship Center of Central Ohio, and, uh, and that it is indeed uh, the place that you know people know how to worship the Lord freeness that is in this this place and so as apostle has said we go so far back a long way back and we're brothers in so many so many ways brothers in Christ brothers in a fraternity bond a Kappa Alpha Psi and so I'm just grateful that I can I, you don't have that many friends you got some associates but you don't have that many friends and, and apostle David is definitely my friend and my brother and we thank God for that relationship. I'm on assignment uh, to share the gospel as we, this is a celebration of our brother's birthday and because the Bible says and I give you gifts according to my own heart and his gift to us to the body of Christ so we ought to celebrate the gift that God has given uh, on to us. Amen. I want to borrow this text in 2 Kings chapter 7. Uh, 2 Kings, now, I'm going to be using a couple of translations. One will be Eugene Peterson's, the Message Bible, and the other one is the New King James translation, the New King James translation. 2 Kings chapter 7, if it is your tradition to stand, I'm going to ask you to do so uh, at this time if you're able. 2 Kings chapter 7, I'm reading from the New King James Version. Verse 3 says this, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said one to another, why are we sitting here until we die? Verse 4 says, if we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come and let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Verse 5 says this, And they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Verse 6 says, for the Lord had caused the army, listen, for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots. Okay, y'all missed the place to holler. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots. Some of y'all took the other bus. Let me give it to you one more time. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. Good God. So they said one to another, look, the king of Israel has hired, has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Verse 7 says, therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and they left the camp intact. Okay, y'all missed the place to shout. And they left 
the camp intact. In other words, the enemy left the camp intact. Their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their life. I want to put a tag on the text. I want to talk about tomorrow will be better. Yeah, yeah. You ought to just slap that with yourself and say tomorrow, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be better. No, I need some people to affirm that and grab that now. Tomorrow will be better. Now, now, you got to believe it and you got to say it. If you really knew that your tomorrow was going to be better than your today, you ought to get a little louder and say tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow will be better. You may be seated. One has to know that whenever we are operating uh, a motor vehicle, you have three options in terms of your, of the directional use. You can either move forward in the gear of drive. You can stand still in the gear of neutral yes. or you can make your choice yes, to go backwards in reverse yeah. I don't care what's going on and let me just power that analogy because as we examine the text and as we are living in this very unusual climate but I don't care what's going on I still think that we're living in the best days of our lives yes, sir. Because as long as you are able to magnify the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, and you recognize that nothing slips under his eyes. He's aware of everything that's going on, and that's why this is the greatest time for the church. This can be very a very intimidating time in life uh, because you cannot depend on the decisions of other people yes, for your own progress. Yeah. Because I have discovered that people will leave you out there. Yes, you got to be very deliberate in your choices. And in this case, you've got to choose to shift your own stuff. You can't be behind the wheel and dream and think and laugh about going forward. You got to do more than just sit there. You got to put the car in drive yeah. if you want to go to that next place. And no matter how much you rev up the engine, I can recall as a little boy, and sometimes my dad would jump out of the car and leave the car running. I would just love to put my foot on the accelerator, but let me tell you something, revving up an engine won't get you anywhere. Right, right. That's what a lot of people are doing, just revving up the engine. And so this morning, as we examine the text, some who are here today are in fact parked at the crossroads of life. You're trying to make a decision about what's the next move. You don't know whether to go right. You don't know whether to go left. You don't know whether to back up. You don't know who you are. You don't know what. You don't know when. You don't know where you are going. You look good on the outside, but those are questions of life that we ask ourselves, particularly in this season that we're in, and you're trying to decide whether or not to stay. Do I stay parked? where I am right now? Maybe I'm the only somebody that has asked these questions. Do I stay parked where I am now? Do I accept whatever life throws my way? LGBTQIA. All of the letters trying to find it was just LG, now it's LGBTQIA. I said, What is IA? IA is intersect, and the A is sexual. Uh, asexual. Reverse backwards into something. Some are trying to find themselves, and we're afraid to talk about it in the church. 
Nobody wants to say anything about what's taking place in this world that we live in. People are trying to make decisions as to whether or not to elevate or to ignite your expectation. To trust God and to move forward. And in our text this morning, there are four leprous men who are also part in the crossroads of life. And now they have to make a decision. Brother Bruce, as to whether or not to shift or do they stay where they are and die. Ah, but verse 4 tells us that they've already given the situation meaningful and deliberation and have concluded that they only have three directional options as well, much like the Ukrainian resistance that complicated Russia's efforts to seize Ukraine. I wish I had some witness in here. See, they thought that they were going to walk right in and and Ukraine was just going to roll over. But but, but somebody in Ukraine made up their mind, uh, we ain't going out like that. I wish I had a witness in the house here. And so you've got to understand option one is to, in fact, reverse and return to the struggle. Oh, go back to their past. They, can, they can't go back to the place, to the city, where everybody that they know and everybody that they are familiar with is struggling. They can't go back. So their first option, listen to me, is to go back to a toxic environment and become the fatality of a famine. Somebody shout glory to God. Oh, they could put their lives in reverse and go back to the place of struggle and just become another statistic. Oh, they could choose to regress instead of progress. But somebody holler, I choose to progress. progress. Option one was reverse and return to the struggle. Option two is to stay parked in the gear of neutral and remain where they are seated. Yeah, that's their second option. Yeah, it is instead of putting their lives in reverse and and going backward, it is in fact for them to just stay in the gear of park. They do they can do absolutely nothing. They can just conclude that where they are now is how they are now. It's where and how the Lord wants them to be. Uh, Uh Uh Scoot over a little closer. Let me help you with this right here because that's what some people choose to do is blame it on God. This just must be where God, because it's easy to accept something uh, when you blame it on somebody else. Uh, I wish I had some witnesses in the house. You, they can just remain sitting saying, we can't do better because it is the will of God for us to do what, to die right where we are. But you got to make up your mind that God wants you to live and not die. Yeah, yeah I wish I had some believers in the house. You got to speak life into your own self. Too many of us have in fact began to entertain the miseries of life. But the God that I serve wants us to know now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power of the word that works in us. Oh yeah, somebody holler glory to God. Option three for them is to shift forward. Uh Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shift forward. Shift forward and rely on the sovereignty of God. In other words, if you're shifting forward, you're going to have to do something radical. And I think we got too many complacent folks in the body of Christ. Yeah, but sometimes you have to do something radical. And when this pandemic came, I happened to have been preaching the last Sunday before they shut everything down. I was at one of my spiritual son's church in Dothan, Alabama. And so I wasn't even at the church when everything just shut down. 
but I, I began to think and I end up, what do you do when you find yourself just preaching the gospel to empty pews? Uh, one thing I'd made up my mind was I wasn't going to go out like Satan thought, and that is give up and say, we'll get together when we get together. No, it's the same God, yeah, the same power working all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. They could take a leap of faith. Somebody holler, take a leap. leap. Yeah, you got to take a leap of faith and decide not to go in reverse or remain in park. You got to decide, decide I have to shift the gear Mm -hmm. into drive. Thank God. Thank God Uh that they move forward. Yeah, I mentioned that. I mentioned their options because somebody this morning, somebody that's watching under the sound of my voice has been given those three similar options. You can return to a place of struggle. In other words, go back to what you escaped from. Go back to failed dreams. Go back to a negative environment. Go back to that which you know is not good for your family. You can return to a place of struggle. You can remain parked in your situation if you want to. Ponder about what could be. Pray about what should be. Preach about what ought to be. In the meantime, you're still parked. And everything and everybody is passing you by. There you are parked. Licking your wounds. Having a pity party. Embarrassed by this and that. And have an injured ego. Parked. You can otherwise, lastly, you can rely Mm -hmm. on the power of the sovereign. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, you got to shift into what you are expecting God to do in your life. Yeah, ah, yeah, you got to move outside of your comfort zone. Yeah, you have to try something that maybe you have never tried before. You have to take A leap of faith and climb the staircase. Money is not a problem for God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Experience God on another level. Experience God on another dimension. And I want to suggest to us this morning that you have to put your life into drive. You have to go forward. I've never seen people that say they love God but yet they're afraid to go to church. Watch out now. Watch out. I was just at one of the games in Memphis. The, the, the uh, Grizzlies were playing, and the stadium was filled with people. Uh-huh. Filled with people. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you fill up a, a, a stadium, but you can't fill up the church? Come on, Come on. And the stadium was not filled with people who did not go to church. I discovered that people go where they want to go. Yeah. Yeah. You got to rely on the power of a sovereign God. But then, but then, but then, but then, but then. uh, A couple of reasons. Apostle, that why I look at this text, why the moves of these four lepers. Impress me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's some reason. And maybe it impressed me. I'm sure it'll probably impress you as well. And the thing that, that impressed me about the lepers was the fact of, watch this, when they moved. Yeah, yeah. Okay, don't make me unpack the text. Y'all looking at me like that here. Yeah, let me let me get yeah. It was what what impressed me uh, as I do a, an exegetical look at the text. What what really impressed me was when they moved. Now remember, here are these guys that had this dreaded disease called leprosy, and they were on the outside of the city gate, at the gate of the outside of the city. But what impressed me was when they moved. Let me drop it on your lap like this here. They moved at a time when a prophetic word had been released in the atmosphere. 
Okay, some of y'all missed it. It went right over your head. Yeah, they moved at a time when, when a prophetic word had been released into the atmosphere because uh, when you go back a little further, we didn't read all this. I'll just let you in on ha what happened. Trust me, it's in the Bible. Keep in mind that uh, back in verse 1, Come on, sir. Elisha says yeah. in chapter 7, verse 1, Elisha said, listen. God's word. The famine is over. Watch this. This time tomorrow. Y'all missed the place to shout. This time tomorrow, food will be plentiful. A handful of meal and a shekel. Two handful of grain for a shekel. The market is at the city gate will be buzzing. Y'all miss it. Y'all miss it. Yeah, watch this. Watch this. Because Elijah's prophecy uh -huh. was tomorrow, tomorrow is going to be better than today. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the first thing that I see in the text uh, was that immediately after the prophecy was released, uh -huh. these men were moving. Oh, uh, y'all miss it, y'all miss it, huh? But I'm finna give you something to shout off of. Watch this, watch this. See, immediately after the prophecy was released, the men were moving. You ain't really got what to shout off of yet, but, but understand the scene here. These men were not in the audience. Come on, come on, come on, come on, son. When Elijah... Release this word. Right, right, right. Keep in mind, the Bible says that they were sitting at the gate. Y'all missed a place to holler. But the word had been released into the atmosphere. Y'all missed a place to shout. They were sitting, they were sitting, they were sitting at the gate when the word. Come on, come on. was released. Yeah, yeah. They were not in the audience uh -huh. when Elijah released this word. Yeah. The Bible says that they were sitting in verse 3 mm -hmm. at the entrance of the city. Yeah. That's something for me to shout about uh -huh. because what's so powerful about the prophetic word of God is that though the word was not in their lives, the word was over their lives. Okay, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. See, the word was already at work before they had parked at the crossroads of light. The word was not in their lives, but the word was over their lives. Okay, let me make it more contemporary for you. Don't act like the only reason you made it is because you prayed. Uh -uh. But your mama or your daddy or your grandmother had released a word. Maybe I'm the only one huh, that should have got in some real, real bad stuff, but because the word had been released over, I wish I had a witness in my life, it had been released over my life. Yeah. Y'all scared me. Y'all scared me. I'm almost through. The word had been released into the atmosphere. You have not ever prayed for your children? Yeah, I got three sons, and and and. They 35 and down to 30. And so, but what, here's what was interesting. When they were younger, uh -huh. they're all boys. They're all men now. But, but they wanted to stay out late. Come on, son. Yeah. Come on, I made up my mind because I'm restless. Why are they not back by now? I said, now, ain't no need for God and me to be up. If I got any witnesses in the house yet, somebody need to go to sleep. And since he never sleeps nor slumbers, I might as well go to bed. And from that night on, I slept in peace. I wish I had some witnesses here. Yeah. Yeah. The lepers didn't know it. But they were moving at a time when the promise of better was over them. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes you got to lay hands on yourself mm -hmm. and say better is coming. Yeah. Yeah. 
Have I got a witness in the house? Somebody holler, better is coming. Lazarus, the other day, he said the only reason he woke up out of being in the arms of death for four days was because Jesus had released a word over his life. Mary said the only reason she didn't freak out after being informed that she was the chosen one to give birth to the Savior of the world was because the word had been released over her life. And many of you are still here today because of the release of a prophetic, powerful word over your life. You ought to thank God that you're still sane. You ought to thank God that you're still strong. You ought to thank God that you're still pressing forward. You ought to thank God that you're still looking up. You ought to thank God that he's healed, healed your body. You ought to thank God that your witness is still strong. Have I got one witness here? This is a word that has been released into the atmosphere. And I'm wondering if there's anybody in here. Is there anybody who uh, will create an environment in order to activate your faith by simply declaring that tomorrow will be better? That's really all you're doing when you declare something. You are activating your faith. Somebody tell the Lord, ta-ta. Ah, the move came after a prophetic release. But secondly, I was impressed because the move caused a powerful response. Yes, it did, because in verse 5 it says, They rose up in the twilight to go into the camps of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp, Behold, there was no man there, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise. Now, that's where you shout at, because it wasn't any horses, and there weren't any chariots, but the Lord had caused. Have I got one witness here? You know the Lord will cause your enemies to hear something that really ain't fair. That's why you don't have to worry about how God's going to work it out. The truth of the matter is, it's already worked out. Somebody shall thank you, Jesus. Verse 5 tells us that the four lepers decided to make their move. You ought to elbow somebody and tell them you better make your move. They decided to move toward the Syrian camp. Look at how they moved. Thanks be unto God. And I'm out of here. Number one, they moved without having the facts. What are you getting from, Bishop? They didn't know what the outcome was going to be. They didn't know if they were going to live or if they were going to die. As a matter of fact, in verse 4, quotes them saying, if they save us alive, we will live. But if they kill us, shall we but die? Yet, without facts, F-A-C-T-S Without facts They kept going forward I stopped in to tell somebody You don't have to have the facts In order to keep moving forward But not only did they have the facts They moved without the facts They moved without having the forces Because the text says That they Watch this here now, uh, the course refers to uh, just the four of them. Uh, I think it's interesting uh, for us to know that they didn't have a battalion, that they didn't have a brigade, that they didn't have a division, that they didn't have a detail, yet without forces. There are some of us, you don't want to move unless you got a bunch of folks with you. Sometimes you got to let some folks 
go so that God can do what he wants to do. Have I got a witness here? Somebody shall move without the forces, but then they moved without having fear. The text says that they rose up early in the twilight to go to the camps of the Syrians. Note that they are approaching the Syrians, which represents the enemies at camp time when the enemies, the army of the enemies, typically would be going into conflict and not getting ready to concede which speaks to the fact that they had no fear. Good God from Zion, we see the effects here. We know the effects of fear. Somebody in here knows what it's like to operate in fear. Thank you Jesus. Fear will keep you in a place of paralysis. Fear prevents and postpones what God wants to do in your life. And yet without fear, they kept going forward. They moved without facts. They moved without forces. They moved without fears. Somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. But let me show you what favor is. Because verse 6 says, for the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise, a noise of chariots. Well, I come to tell you, that's nothing but the favor of God. Have I got a witness here? God will. You know everything you got. You may be better now, but everything you got wasn't because you had great credit. Some of it was because the favor of God was just on you at the time. You will shock yourself that they said you had been approved. Don't look at me like that. You know God is with you. Somebody shout, yes, he is. The lepers kept on moving. They were moving on the earth while God was moving in the heavens. But I'm glad to know, 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 I got about the grace of God. God lets us know that he's still with us. These lepers were mightier than what they really were. That's what I call favor. Favor is when God can look at you and hallelujah, somebody else see you. They see you as not going to make it. But favor is God making you uh, viewed as something that you are not. Uh, favor is uh, God making people uh, overestimate you. Uh, this is a word uh, that has been released into the atmosphere. Somebody shout tomorrow uh, is going to be better. Uh, have I got one witness here? Uh, is there anybody uh, that don't mind testifying about the grace of God? Uh, somebody shout thank you. Uh, this is your time to try it again. This is your time to step out on faith. This is your time to trust God like never before. This is your time to move into greater. This is your time to expect better. This is your time to launch out into the deep. This is your time to cast out your nets. This is your time to realize your dreams. This is your time to make your move. Have I got one witness here? Is there anybody that don't mind testifying that we serve a good God? Is there anybody that knows that he's able when nobody else can do it. 
God can do it. When nobody else can change it, God can change it. When nobody else understands, God understands. When nobody else can accomplish it, God can handle it. God can. And he will. In this, in this season that we are in, it is your time now. Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow. 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 Will be. Better. Sometimes we sit down on our laurels and we part. People begin to talk. Well, all of that ain't necessary. All of that praise. All of that. Lifting your hands. Now, I get it. Some of us were wallflowers when we were younger. Even if you went to a club, you didn't get on the floor. We don't all have to praise alike, but when you think about where God has brought you from, he is worthy. And the only thing that you can give God that he does not have is your praise. Yeah, it's your praise. It's your praise. When you praise him, tomorrow will be better. When you declare that, and you have to place yourself in a posture of expectation. And that's going to require you to have to leave some people alone. I did not say act arrogant with them. I did not say don't speak to them. I did not say walk around with your nose up in there. No, 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 no. But there are some people who are on assignment to derail you. If they are not speaking life into you, there ain't but one thing left for them to speak. See? If they can't affirm you and help build you up, why are you giving them that much time? I believe without a doubt that this pandemic that was no surprise to God And I, I heard God saying, now is the time while the ground is fertile for making changes and shifting your expectation. But you have to be willing to do the radical. Yeah. Because if you don't, now, there are some people who are parked and they're saying, ooh, I can't wait till it get back to what it used to be. Well, can I let you in on something? It ain't going to be what it used to be. It's going to be better. Yeah, it's going to be better. It's, go it's going to be better. Because some folk were just hanging on anyway. They were just waiting for a reason not to come back. I'm talking about the Golden Gate Cathedral. They were just waiting, waiting on a reason. They couldn't, they, they pride wouldn't let them just ease out, going out. No, 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 no. So in this season, in this season, are you ready to make that shift? Or are you just hanging on to what used to be? Things can turn around in your life, in your house, right now. I want everybody to stand. I'm done preaching. Y'all can stand. Stand. If you can, stand. 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 Everybody, stand. That means rise. I'm done. I'm done. I got up at, yeah, quarter tail. It's 11, 15, or whatever that clock say, 12, something. It's on the 15. Now listen.
what are you going to do with the word that you've heard? What are your next steps? Okay, now God, you let me hear this word today. Okay, and don't, don't say, oh, I know somebody should have been here to hear it. Uh-uh. No, 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 uh-uh, no, no. It's for you because you heard it. But what are you going to do with that, that dream that you have on the shelf? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do? And I'm talking this lady on the front row right here. With what God has birthed inside of you. That is lying dormant. That's lying dormant. 